Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, the Duff Dog and I are working on our Barn Fine 1962 Pontiac Catalina, complete with the GTO 400 and a Super T10 four speed and a Posi. But that's the reason I love it. The reason I don't love it is because we got parts scattered all over the shop. So, first thing we're going to do, get the old seats out of that thing, clean out the inside, and get these new seats put in this thing so that they're not on my gall dang shop floor. Because the Duff says we got a mess in here, don't we? Over here we got the front seat from I believe a 64 Bonneville came with the car We got to take the seat track off ours and put on here because somebody helped themselves to the uh, power seat so The seat can't be any worse than the one we got and it'll match the front and the back So and it'll be off like gall dang floor. Maybe we could put some heater controls in it. Duff says that doesn't sound intriguing either Mojo's working on some Hemi heads back there because Why wouldn't we be working on Hemi's around here? Never mind the Chrysler Newport. We got door panels, I believe from the same car. They're cleaned up, they're a little chewy on the bottom, but they're better than the ones that we don't have at all. Here's the rear seat. This thing cleaned up, freaking amazing. There's some stainage going on in that light blue, but otherwise good. And then the bottom of this seat is already in the car. So let's just jump right into it. Get that old seat out of there. Get some cleaning going on. Do some seat things. Just for you, Wes, we're just gonna jump right into it. And we might clean up that air cleaner, and put the right fuel pump on it, battery hold down, put the old 750 back on it. Now that Mojo got it rebuilt, put a floor shift steering column in it, disc brakes, power steering, power brakes. Okay, just kidding. All right, here's the OEM seat. I believe this is true to the car. Oh, look at this cool old Nike shirt. Just do it. People ask me how I keep my teeth from chattering in the wintertime. I leave them in my locker. Anyway, it's real blowed out right in there where I got to sit. So we'll get that out of there. And then, like I said, the lower is already out of that Bonneville. So we got to get that whole back seat out of there. Maybe we'll take the speaker deck out because it's ugly. Maybe we'll leave it because it fills a hole. We got to get all the mouse house out of here, too. So... Oh, dang it. Put a kink in that. Duff, did you step on it? All right. I'm guessing it's just like four, five sixteenths, three ace bolts, maybe eight of them, because it's fancy and a luxurious Pontiac. We'll find out. <sighs> My back already hurts just thinking about this. I could holler at Mojo, but he's busy doing hemi stuff on the other side of the shop. So here goes nothing. Lift with your legs, right? This would be the advantage to bucket seats. They're easier to store and easier to remove one at a time. Your worthless information of the day Bench seats are actually lighter than bucket seats. When guys would order factory race cars like, say, uh, 1970 Cutlass 442, they would order it with a four-speed and a bench instead of buckets because it's lighter. The more you know, knowledge, it's power. Your worthless information of the day. And now back to your back-breaking bench seat shenanigans. Maybe I should get some of those pellets on my butt like pudding, and then I'll just be able to carry this with one arm. That guy's special. I think he's just going through a change and that's why they're giving him them pellets. That's what I heard. So close. Also, I used to get hollered at by my dad and my uncles for banging seats ahead and back, slamming them. Or God forbid, if you moved them both at the same time and they ran into each other, they thought the universe was gonna stop spinning. I don't understand how it was bad for him to do that, but maybe it was bad because if he went like that and then smashed the other one on top of it, I don't know. But that really ground their gears from what I remember is. No, that really grinds my gears. The uh, loud uh, voices as a child. The voices I hear now are quiet and we're friends, kind of. The voices, not the adults. We don't get along. Adults, God, I suppose I should just be an adult now. All righty, there it is. Did we bend that? Don't worry, I fixed it. 
We gotta take them seat tracks. I think it's just a couple of three ace bolts, one there, one there. We gotta make sure to leave our lever linkage thing. Uh, conveniently, the cover came off of our lever. So we gotta pop that back on. But yeah, we just gotta hopefully swap that onto our new seat. The seats looks good underneath. Which side's my side? The side with the seat cover on it. I feel like all the springs are busted on this side, but they look good. The foam's just missing. Oh, they're a little sacked out. Oh, they're supposed to be tied together with these hog rings. So I bet if you tied that wire to, to that, that would stiffen it up a bit. Because see, when you pull this wire, it brings this one with it, where this guy... That's one that gets sat on all the time. She's all by itself. There's a science to this seat stuff. We won't throw this away because two door seats are like gold and I'm guessing this probably fits like 61 to 64 GMs. But yeah, let's do a little cleaning in here. See if we find any new missing parts. New? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a door handle, kids. It's, it's definitely a door handle with a hole in the end. Never mind that thing. And uh, yeah, this... I don't think this four-speed hump is out of this car. These uh, ribs don't line up with these ribs. And it was cut a little bit undersized, so we're going to have to resize that. All right, that job really sucked. You could say that about any vacuuming job, right? You know what doesn't suck? The floors in this thing. I don't know if it's factory because Pontiac, what did it go? Cadillac, Buick, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Chevrolet. Cadillac, Buick, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Chevrolet. I get uh, the Pontiac and the old screwed up. I think Olds was just above. Nah, maybe it was Pontiac just above the Chevrolet. But anyway, I've never seen a Chevrolet with sound deadener on the inside. Have you ever seen factory sound deadener on the inside? I've seen them underneath cars and it was like an option or dealer add-on. But these floors are great, aren't they, Duff? Yeah. Got them cleaned up real good. Like I showed you before, this is the only rust right there, Duff, right there in the whole freaking floor. And it's got this sound deadener on it. But the sound deadener is over the seat belts, and I think seat belts were an option. This says Rotunda, so Rotunda is Ford, right? So date one of 65. So yeah, these seats were added in, so I'm guessing maybe Terrence to haul his kids in the back, put these seat belts in it, and then uh, find the floor. I don't know, but they're phenomenal. I don't know if I like the seat belts. They're gonna be the wrong color if we go with blue, but we'll leave them in there just in case Duff's friends need to get buckled in once in a while. Yeah, it's amazing the difference it makes. Driver's side's always usually worse, super solid over there. I don't know if they didn't line the fronts or just cause Foot traffic from not having carpet, but it's not as good a shape up here, but the floors are still pretty freaking awesome. So, yeah, we gotta swap that uh, seat base, and we uh, should figure out something with that shifter tower boot cover thinger. And let's swap that column quick. You wanna do that? What do you want? You wanna do the shifter, or you wanna do the seat? Or you wanna do the column? I gotta do all of them? Okay. Let's do that. But yeah, floors in this car are real nice. Really nice. Huh? I think first thing I'm gonna do is get these uh, the seat base off and uh, get this out of my way because we don't need a seat taking up space in the shop. Clean up the lower and we'll be able to put that back in there. We got the upper cleaned up, but here's the original upper. Look at all that mouse house in there. I'm guessing these fit Impalas and Oldsmobiles and Buicks and all that. So we'll hang on to it. The frame's in good shape. Of course, backs get a lot less action than the fronts, unless you're a special individual. But anywho, I'm going to pull seat base off for me quick. Yeah, I'll do that too. Get a 36 Ford pickup. They make great workbenches slash storage facilities slash transport junk around. Real nice. Works good, huh, Duff? Okay, let's do this. I'm an idiot. Those are half. Because why wouldn't GM use the same bolts they hold into the floor with? Sounds 
like a 6-2 to me. Definitely should have cleaned those up a little bit, but let's be honest, the seat, I'm a tall guy, it's gonna be all the way back and that's where it's gonna stay until uh, somebody shorter owns the car. And the seat, I'd really like to have it gone through long-term, but it's just not in the cards right now. And uh, it's gonna be big bucks to get that seat gone through. I got a feeling, but maybe we can, maybe they make covers for them, I don't know, that uh, looks like that, that'd be sweet. But I really like that tritone. Anywho, she's ready to go in there. But before we put that in there, let's get that column and uh, shift tower, all that stuff addressed. In case we got to do some welding, or that'll give us some more room, and it's easier to lay on a nice bare floor. You know who else likes laying on nice bare floors? Doesn't matter how many dog beds we buy. That guy. He likes a good bench seat once in a while if they're laying on the floor. All right, I'm gonna. Hopefully uh, take this column out. There should be a little bit of wiring for the horn and the blinkers. And obviously we got our rag joint or whatever on the end and then the pastor on the firewall. That should be about it. Shouldn't be any shift linkage. Oh, it's not hooked up anyway. Might be down there. Let's do that. Get ourselves a tilt and a column shift or floor shift. No more column shift. No more uh, two and a four speed or Four and a three speed, whatever it is. We could probably get rid of the old uh, alarm as well, eh? We'll leave it there. It's a good spot to route our battery cable. Of course, the rag joint's on the new one. Would be a good time to put a new rag, jo rag joint in. If we had one. What are you doing, Boy Scout? Starting a fire? Yep. Warming your hands up? Yep. Lapping valves. Did you find some lapping? Oh, we did find some valve grinding compound. So these heads, Hemi heads, were gone through 100 years ago and just sat on my shelf. So I had Mojo check them out. He filled them up with Windex, put some air in there, and found out that this small, it's bigger valve, so that must be the intake side, huh? Yep. Intake side was leaking. So we're gonna try lapping it. See if that seals it up. Looks like they just kinda, how'd the, how'd the valve job look? Piss poor that they did? Yeah. Does it? Well, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Might have to redo them. Looks like I got screwed again. You like seeing me get screwed over. Yeah, oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> Doctor's up, huh? Yeah. Okay. Give her the, the doctor mojo. I suppose if we gotta grind some valves and cut some seats, now's the time to do it. I would say there's some pretty good pitting going on there, ain't there? Yeah, there is. God dang it. You just can't trust nobody these days. Well, you let me know what you figure out. Duff says I gotta get back to work. Yeah, okay. I suppose you wanna drive him to Fergus Falls, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna split the rag joint. I don't think I'm gonna take the rag joint right off of that uh, steering box down there. That other rag joint looks better. Anywho, generally speaking, it's a 12 point to take that bolt out. I suppose it's for safety so people think twice before they put a socket on it, but I'm gonna crack that loose quick. And usually they're a fine thread bolt, sure enough. Looks like this is a 3 8 fine thread bolt and then it's got a half inch 12 point head. Kind of a special bolt. Kind of like me, special hardware geek. Now we should just have to slide that off that spline shaft. Maybe we gotta take this ugly bracket off down here. I don't know what that was for. Neutral safety or reverse lights maybe? Yeah, I suppose this thing ain't got reverse lights because they definitely weren't hooked up to the transmission before. Well, they might have, but it was an automatic. We don't need backup lights. Pff, like they work on anything that I got anyway.
good news it slid up and down on the uh, shaft coming out of the steering box so hopefully once we get everything loose up there we'll be able to slide it all the way off sometimes they're a real bugger to get off there because they've been on there for 62 years did you get the stuff done on the inside or what no leaving that up to me thanks you're a real big help around here no matter what anybody says yeah look away not been able to show you in here much but there's a plate at the firewall and the das boot it's no shoe it's das boot that holds it to the firewall and seals it up and then there's a connector up here electrical for the neutral safety backup lights turn signal horn all that and there's a bracket here that i think it's just a trim piece and then there's probably a couple bolts that's going to hold it in place as well and then we got to sneak it all through sometimes you got to move the shift linkage in order to get it through the hole because i don't know why they don't just make a round hole or a square hole it's it's usually some odd shaped hole odd just like us oh what do we need for tools looks like a giant phillips here and a five sixteenths or a quarter down there Everything should be loose. I'm gonna go pry on the other end and see if it slides out. I think it's just held on by the splines on the steering box. There we go. Then we just gotta see if we can get her fish through the hole. Not a chance. There's two plates that you can remove, I took the smaller one off first, we're going to have to take the big one off. Don't ask me why the small one's even there. There we go, here's what I was talking about. This plate must just hold this seal. And that wasn't going to fit through there. So we need to take this thing loose. And we knocked a whole bunch of dirt loose, so we'll get the vacuum cleaner back up before we slide the new one in. Or in a perfect world, anyway. Maybe we won't. Oh, that plate's different. Wiring looks different. Is it? Oh, that's the same. We just gotta unhook her. Right there, somebody, whoever removed this, took the uh, harness Wait, what? Well, the previous person cut the harness in the car instead of disconnecting it here, but we're just gonna disconnect it here. And then we gotta figure out what to do with this one, which I think is for the horn. So a couple things we gotta modify. This clamp and that wire harness, just a little bit. And by modify the harness, I think we just Bypass the horn. Not like it worked before anyway. You know what works good for working on these little connectors? Magnetic screwdrivers. Get yours at Mortski.com. You got a couple different options available. Hurry up and get yours before uh, Valentine's Day, the uh, special edition. Screw the flowers. I'm watching Mortski. If you order now, you can maybe get a bell Valentine's Day. Unless this video comes out after Valentine's Day. And then you really are screwed. Sit on crescent wrenches. Dang nabbit. I do a little modifying on the old shifter arm here to get that clamp off, but I refused to cut it. I could have cut this and welded it back on, or I could have cut that and re welded it, but I just gave her the old Mordsky tweak. Come on. Still getting used to these new Knipexes. Not that they're 
new, just new to me. Well, they are new, but I never use them before. Everybody brags about them. I'm not sold on them yet. There you go. Back OEM specs. Where are these things made? Germany. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Deutsch. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Deutsch, nein. Sprichst du Deutsch? Deutsch. Das Auto. Das Auto. You know, drop that over that. Got our dirty rubber over there. I think we'll put a little croil up here to lube up our bearing and our splines. And we're ready to slide this thing in there. The only thing that's not going to work is our neutral safety switch, but I suppose we could hook it up to the clutch, but they never had them back then, so we're just going to bypass that. Then we'll have to do make some type of connector for our horn. And if somebody ever wanted to put this column back in the car or this column back in a Grand Prix, we didn't really uh, screw anything up other than we bent this. Didn't do this shifter arm any good, but it'll be it'll be fine. Perfectly good for future use. We'll stash this one away, even though I don't know why, because like 98% of Pontiacs came with automatics, so who's gonna want this thing? If it was a three on the tree call shifter or column or a uh, floor shift column be a little bit more desirable, but this is the least desirable of all the 1962 Pontiac steering columns. And it's non-tilt to boot. Oh man, we're gonna have to get this guy off of there. How is that held in there? Well, this has got the hole, so maybe it just, oops, just gotta boop it out of there. A little boop action. Sure enough. Oh yeah. This got a little pin there that rides in the uh, Nacharuski there. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Never seen them like that before. All right, lube action. <laughs> One other thing we're gonna do is get rid of this shift indicator while we're in there. And luckily, in our stash of parts, we got this thing and the only difference is this one's got this little chrome block off plate i'm guessing that came out of the three-speed car but same thing would be in the uh, grand prix because they're a uh, floor shift so looks like we just got to take these two what do they call those those tin nuts body nuts whiz nuts we gotta take them nuts off pop that one out of there this one's actually in a lot better shape too so a lot less pitting slide that on there good to go Maybe since I've been there, we'll get those heater controls out of there because it looks like the temp and fan knobs are both busted. Don't worry, I did vacuum before I uh, started doing this project as well. So no need to remind me. That's the purple wire for the neutral safety switch that we're going to have to loop as well. this heater control out. I'm gonna go look at the other one, see if that one's any better. I'm guessing it is. Maybe this one's just missing the knobs. Looks like it is. What? Oh my gosh. Hopefully you guys can see this fan goes from off, low, medium, high, and watch this. Here's the temp. One bar, two bar, three bar, four bar, five. There's probably a sixth one in there somewhere, but that is freaking awesome. Not like you could see the thing when you're driving, but that is pure sex appeal right there. Oh, it's just like the radio. Goodness, speaking of that, we gotta find the radio delete and put in here. 
anyway that was a lot of fun to put in there let me show you how neat the automatic one was i'm guessing this is the only different piece this piece is the same but there is a pile to the automatic setup i pried this out of there i didn't even know that was in there yeah you got that plate you got the lens like i said this piece carries over and then you got this who dank up in there and that's ran off a linkage which is adjustable and there's a spring for the return and they painted all blue inside so i suppose it's reflective at night or i don't know so you gotta have all of that stuff there that guy there that thing there and there's no good way to hold it all together i don't think so maybe oh yeah let me see if i can put it together that way, when somebody needs to buy it at a swap meet, it's not a scattered up mess. I'm guessing. Oh yeah, and then there's a screw down here that's holding it in place that's hard to see. We gotta put, does the indicator go inside of there? Probably. Something like that, maybe. And then that guy. Oh yeah. And there is a couple little tiny screws that hold it together that I didn't need to take out. All I needed to take out was that guy down there. There we go. And then if we get ourselves another one of them tin nuts. We hold that whole assembly together, ready for somebody to automatic convert their Pontiac along with the steering column. You gotta pull the bulb out of that socket that's hanging underneath the dash. Otherwise, we're just gonna have a light hanging underneath our dash lit up when we turn the uh, headlights on. Yeah, there you go. Keep your stuff all in one piece. It'll be worth more than a dollar at your auction sale that way. Yeah, this heater control is in better shape. They slide way better. Look at the temp. What is that, six of them? Sounds like the clickers that the uh, eye doctor use. One or two. One or two. Three or four. Does this make it better or worse? Ready? There. Worse. I think it's pretty straightforward, just two screws on the bottom. No, no, no. They got this screw on the top. And when you look at it like this, it doesn't look like a screw, but it's like a set screw. And it's, it's like a jam that jams against the dash. But that leaves some, leaves, leaves, leaves a bit to be desired. But look at this. So you have these three buttons off, normal, and the de ice. Look what they do. You got these three rods with springs in there. And then it's got this rotator with all these vacuum hoses, and that's what uh, engages your blend doors. Watch this. That moves it. That moves it another click. And if you push that off, it goes all the way back. There's a lot going on there. Not only is there that, they're activating this switch back here and this switch here. That's off. There's a uh, normal, whatever that is. We don't know what normal is. And then defrost gauges that switch up here. There's a lot of freaking engineering. They went into the mounting of this, maybe not so much. This this guy just he was just winging his job. But the folks who designed everything going on here, that is sweet. I'm guessing this uh, mechanics wire twisted around that is. Not OEM, but that is a freaking engineering marvel right there, the heater controls. And then these three tubes, blue, yellow, and red, in case anybody's uh, wiring one of these up, I'm guessing that's what runs your blend doors underneath the dash. 
And the only cable is this one right here, which is uh, hooked up to the temp. So I suppose that just opens your blend door from hot to cold or the valve, heater valve. I don't think this thing's got a heater valve, so it must just be a blend door. Yeah, that's freaking neat. How neat is that? Usually uh, it's just all cables. Cable, well, the fan is usually a switch, high, medium, low. And then there's cables for all your blend doors when you go from floor to defrost and everything else. That's freaking sweet. All right, let's get the new one installed. The, uh, the better shape one with no vacuum hoses on it. Ah, wouldn't you know, it's not that easy. So the splines on the uh, coupler at the bottom of the shaft are different between the Grand Prix and the Catalina. I'm guessing it's because the Grand Prix was probably a power steering car being a higher option car. And also the little hole for the clamp, it's on the opposite side of the steering column on the uh, Grand Prix. So we gotta make that notch or hole or whatever. And then I'm gonna try swapping the coupler from the uh, Catalina to the Grand Prix. So hopefully it goes smoother. Dust hiding because he wants no part of drilling holes in a goodish Catalina column or uh, Grand Prix column. So we got these laid out about the same. This is like a 5 8 shaft and that's a 7 8 And you can see that uh, slot doesn't exist on that one. It does on the bottom side, but then our uh, tilt in our turn signal would be on the wrong side of the column. So basically we need to make that on the back side, like so. Probably gonna need this rubber. We gotta reuse the rubber. A lot of rubber reusing going on this week. So I think what I'm gonna do is swap that, get it up in place, and then hopefully mark it. And then for real good, we can just drill a hole and not have to make a slot. But I'll let you know how that goes. Nothing's ever easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The tilt column out of who knows what kind of Grand Prix. Maybe it's out of a newer one. Maybe tilts are different than straight columns, but it's two inch outside diameter and our stock Pontiac Catalina column shift, no tilt, is two and three eighths. So we either gotta make a 316 spacer all the way around or Another plan. DD Speed Shop, he'd probably just pack a bunch of silicone in there, maybe throw some 3 ace fuel line, who knows. But I'm not about having a steering column that shakes like that, and neither is Duff. So I have this other Grand Prix steering column that somebody sent me, and it, that is a floor shift because all Grand Prix were, and that's 2 and 3 ace, but it's it's all slopped out the uh i don't know what happened down here but somebody screwed up that lower bearing but all we need off this thing is that bell i call it the bell the shift collar whatever you want to call it so i'm gonna see if we can take this one apart first and we can just get this bell off of this one and then put it on the catalina one and then we'll have everything catalina we just won't have tilt but i think i can have a damn it make me a bushing spacer it goes around so it'll clamp it in place nice and we'll be able to put that in at a later time so it's a good thing that we didn't pack up the wire harness or anything to do this so back to the drawing boards hey eh, duff you getting your leg all clean you're going all right i'm gonna pull the steering wheel off and then i think we just gotta take the uh blinker assembly out and then we should be able to get that bell off hopefully in a perfect world, this thing would be in perfect shape. We just bolt it right in. But the steering wheel you can see is baked. Like I said, 
Somebody got a little rough with the bearing down here. That's hammered out. The column that clamps to it is rusty and bent up. Everything else, but let's see if we can get that shift collar off there. Would have just been easier just to uh, knock the shifter off of that thing, cut that knob off, and just schmoo it up with some body filler. That's probably what DD Speed Shop would have done in the first place. And then he probably would have left an automatic in and put some silly B&M floor shifter in there. Okay. Let me see if I can't get this thing apart. And I'm not going to show it to you because I don't know a good way to clamp that thing. I suppose I could put it on the bench in the vise. Maybe we'll try that. Ooh, I got the horn cap off without ruining it. You got a twist. Whoop. I'm going to sing my song. It won't take long. Gonna do the twist and it goes like this. I guess when you take the steering wheel nut off the horn, the ring comes off. So that's pretty neat. You can tell it's a Grand Prix because it says Grand Prix. Now's where we need the steering wheel puller. This guy should thread out of there. That was a lot of work. What are the odds we can get this thing back together again? This is interesting. So your, where's your knobby knob? There's your knob for your blinker, turn signal indicator. Turns this whole thing, which in turn shoves that knob, rotates that, which has got a little pin going through it which pushes that switch back and forth right there. Left, right. It's uh, way more complicated than it needs to be. Now let's disassemble our perfectly good steering column and see what we can screw up. Look at just how wasted this lower bearing is. Even the shaft is all rotted out. I suppose we could have took our that's what we should have done, just taking the steering shaft and this lower bearing out and put in the new one. Yeah, that lower bearing is G-O-W-N, gone. Right here's what the lazy guys would do, just knock this shift arm off there. Oh, jeez, the rice that's stuck pretty good, Duff. Automatics are way more complicated. This is bringing back flashbacks of the old 66 Ford Bronco where I completely redid all this on a three on the tree and that is about as complicated as they get.
anywho, I think we're gonna leave this internal stuff for the uh, column shift because there's no point taking it out. Plus it's probably part of the fitment of the bearings and such. So I think we're ready to start our conversion, maybe. Let's see what happens. Does that go on a certain way? Let me guess, the columns are different and this won't fit on. Hopefully, we're gonna find out. Oh, sure enough, that uh, stuff for the column shift is in the way because that diameter is significantly smaller than that diameter. The saga continues. That is a strange clip spring retainer. Never seen one like that, Duff. Well, now what's holding us up? Oh, the neutral safety switch. All right. <laughs> I like to put it all back together without this tube in there. This is the tube that does your column shift. You get your shifter hooked up up here, and that's your linkage down at the bottom. So we just gotta get the bearing off of there. And that bearing doubles as the bearing for the steering and for the shifter. Now we just gotta put it back together without the automatic stuff. If only that were easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, hey, more parts. This is why I'll never restore a car, because you could literally spend, between waiting for parts and cleaning this up, you could spend a month on this steering column. And some parts like this neutral safety switch or turn signal switch is probably obsolete. Especially on oddball cars like a Pontiac or an Opal, whatever you're working on. But yeah, this is why we don't restore cars. I think I said that on the steering column for that uh, freaking Bronco as well. Okay, so bearing, steering shaft. I only get to put all the fun stuff together on this end somehow. Some way. There goes the fox body. Not sad to see that one go. Ah, the beauty of filming yourself in the shop. The old camera decided to carpe the seize up. Carpe the diem. Seize the car. And we missed it. We didn't miss much, just a lot of frustration. I couldn't imagine how much time I got into this thing. You could have a month into restoring a steering column, and that's if you can get parts. Some of these parts are probably completely obsolete, even if it's a GM or a Chevrolet, but being a Pontiac, we're not gonna find some of this stuff. But anyway, it's all back together, so we can stick the thing in the car. This is why I'll never restore anything, because like I said, by the time you replace the bearing, clean up that shaft, prime paint, knock the dings out, find absolutely perfect one. I was talking to uh, the Mopar man, man, he said thousand bucks to restore one of these steering wheels with this clear translucent amazingness. I mean, they're super cool, but really? Thousand dollar steering wheel? Cripes, I'd never want to put my dirty beaters on it on there anyway. God, you're a dirt ball. Anywho, I'm gonna stick this thing back in there for now. Everything should be stock. The only thing we changed, this tube is a little bit different because it doesn't have the hole for the uh, column shift, but we just changed the bell other than that and then we got rid of that shift tube 
we'll throw that stuff in the stash to uh, get sold for a nickel on our auction sale when we die but uh yeah that bell is all we needed a lot of work for nothing and hopefully we get some bushings made and then we can put that tilt grand prix column in there at some point right duff right i'm guessing that's out of a newer grand prix that or they're just a smaller diameter on the uh, tilt columns anyway if you know comment down below dang making a lot of noise back there cleaning up an oil pan oh we better show you what mojo's got going on uh this is the engine out of that 38 ford pickup it's a 59 chevy 283 we had the heads all gone through it's got a big cam and all kinds of good stuffness but it had a high volume oil pump with a big long oil pickup tube and so they welded up the oil pan anyway we stole a stock oil pan off another one of my beaters we're gonna throw that in there and then this thing's gonna be ready to go in the old run stand we got the sprint car engine out of the run stand that one's filed away for maybe a four-speed nova who knows we'll see all right back to uh four-speed pontiacs you want to slide that column in real quick for me you watch me do it already it should be easy all right Ugh, come on door seat is in column is in i left this torn ring off because i want to go down the road and get it straight before i put the horn ring on no point in putting that on so i can pull the wheel off i adjusted the brake pedal switch and we still don't have brakes brake lights so you gotta adjust that i bolted down the uh pump for the shifter got the back seat in looks good duff has went back there and tested it out and got her all dirty i need to get these things covered they're in tough shape but man i love that tritone that Bonneville speaker is even kind of cool back there. I got the radio delete plate here. Got to figure out how to get the radio out. We'll put that in there. Put that carburetor on. Ooh, maybe we'll put these door panels on. We're getting there. We are getting there. I got power to my brake light switch. My brake light switch is working, but somewhere between the switch and the tail lights, we don't have power. And also, we don't have blinkers. So, got to work on that. But the blue doesn't look amazing with the old Yuma beige duff says, but whatever. Get some, get some off the floor and out of our way. And they look pretty cool. This car would be fantastic silver with those blue seats. Would you concur? You concur. All right, back to work. All right, been doing a little work behind the scenes on this thing. Got the 750, what is it? Model 1411 manual choke back on this thing. Uh, got the steering column installed we had a damn it make these bushings so we can put the tilt one in there sometime and i was gonna make them out of uh mw but couldn't find any so we got some aluminum i got the radio delete installed i put the clock delete in there because we we're going all budget on this thing so maybe we won't even put the uh, tilt in there i still gotta put the trim ring on like i said you could get into these steering columns you could spend a month doing that. You could spend a month touching up the gauges, tear it all apart, cleaning it up, repainting the needles, rewinding the odometer. It just never stops. But I still got to put the screws in the dash and the dash pad. I got to put the glove box in there. I got the uh, shifter boot bolted down. Can't move if I showed you guys that. We're just kind of bouncing around here. We got some new brake parts. We got hopefully one of these four hoses is the correct little radiator hose. I got shocks for the front and the rear, got the right fuel pump, got a harmonic balancer because I guess they're notorious for being bad. But you know what I really want to do? You know, Duff, do you know? I want to get my bench back. So let's play around with some trim and see if we can figure out if any of this trim, well, I'm guessing all of it fits this car. We gotta figure out where it goes on the car and what we need for clips. So uh, let's work real fast and do that. The painfully slow, boring stuff that needs to be done. And ideally this car would all be painted and that stuff would all be cleaned up and we'd have all new shiny clips and we would know what we're doing. But I don't know what color I'm gonna paint the car. I don't know if I'm gonna paint the car. That stuff just sitting there is taking up room and if we move it around a bunch, it's gonna get banged up, it's gonna get lost, it's gonna get bent, we're gonna not know what car it goes on so let's put it back on the car you gonna be of any assistance uh, i guess that means no 
This is why I hate when people tear things apart. At least take some tape and a marker and label them or just a marker. You can write on them with a marker and wipe it off later, but we're missing a bunch of stuff and I don't know how a bunch of stuff goes together, but here's what I've determined thus far. These two guys with the white spear down the middle, go right down the middle of that to match that guy. And then these two guys, see how I labeled them for the next guy? Uh, they go up top here, they're this top spear. Uh, we got the bottom of the rear window. We got one side of the top of the rear window. We're missing the coupler piece that goes in the middle in this side of the window. This is the piece that goes inside right here. This trim goes across the top. We got the top trim for the windshield. We got the side trim for the windshield. We are missing, like I said, there's gotta be a divider. Oh, that's what these guys are for, I bet. Yeah! There we go. So, we're getting that figured out. These go on the inside. There's a spare one for that. There's some spare four-door trim pieces too. I hate putting this stuff on without prepping both the trim and the car and painting it and stuff, but it's gonna be hard enough for me to figure out where this stuff goes anyway. So there's that. But yeah, I think we got pretty much everything. Oh, except for a couple of that back pieces of window trim. And then across the deck lid. The other part about labeling stuff, not only for the next guy, is you can uh, hopefully get a couple bucks out over to the swap meet. So we got all this four door trim here. Uh, that's that center stuff with the, uh, it's shorter for a four door door. This might be for the trunk lid. Might be new old stock. I wonder if that ain't what that is. Nope, that's not what that is. it! gotta keep looking. But we can get a few bucks out of that at a swap meet. Speaking of that, there's a swap meet coming up the 24th, 9 to 1 p.m., 24th February. It's called the Easy Dean Swap Meet. It's at uh, Bonanzaville or the West Fargo Fairgrounds. We are gonna be up there. We're gonna, we, uh, me and Chin for sure. I might get some other helpers. We're gonna bring some, some swag up there, some merch, just a little selection because we can't take everything with us. And then we're gonna load up the enclosed trailer with parts to try to get rid of some stuff. So if you wanna come see us, don't stop out here. Don't come here unannounced. Uh, you can email us and see if we're gonna be available, but it usually doesn't work out anyway. Uh, but if you wanna meet us, that and we're gonna be at uh, the Lone Star Roundup, Puddin' and I, uh, hopefully Chin's, I think he's gonna be there on, at that as well. Uh, April 19th and 20th, we'll be set up there, Ben and Merch as well. But yeah, you can come see us at Easy Dean Swap Meet the uh, 24th February in Fargo, North Dakota. And we'll be, uh, come buy some parts, come buy some merch, all that stuff. I'm gonna keep picking away at this, see what I can figure out. Now we gotta figure out the whole trim situation. That's what Terrence said was why he had that four door trim was for clips. That's what he said he saved that for, but there's no clips in this upper quarter stuff. So I don't know if that goes over the top of there or what. Silly air compressor. Tell you what, this trim work, real fun. Let me show you what we got going on here. So this trim around the back window snaps right in. This corner trim has got bolts, should have bolts, plural, that side did. We're missing one clip with the bolt for this side. So I gotta find that. And of course, that clip is different than that one. So uh, yeah, I wish we had a parts car. And you know how much of a hardware freak I am? All this hardware is different. 
and a bunch of it's missing. So it's like you almost need a whole other donor car just to get all the right trim because you're never going to find it at the hardware store because it's not your standard trim. But anywho, rant over. This trim just kind of clips in. I figured that out all on my own. I'm real proud of myself. You slide it over this backside, walk it up the curve, and then snap her over the top. But you got to take this trim off to get that on. And you got to take this trim off to get that trim off. And then you got to take this windshield trim off. Anyway, that windshield trim snaps in. But yeah, we pretty much, this side's mostly complete. We got to get one clip with a screw for that guy. Or with a nut, whatever you want to call it. And this side, we're missing this piece and that center clip divider deal. This side, we got that. I really wanted to get that bottom piece in there. We got that in because it just kind of wraps it all together. But I think there's a seal that goes in it. And then we're missing this, the inside piece right here. So, yeah. Missing pieces. Don't take stuff apart. These go on the inside. That's like anodized aluminum. You can tell by the way that it is. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Let those go on the inside. We're getting there. Johnny Cash in it, one piece at a time. Let's see if we can't get those in there. And uh, yeah, trim, real fun. Duff is just living it up, aren't you? All right, new update. I got that trim installed, but this A-pillar trim is too long. I mean, it's not like it's a quarter inch off. And I know I could get it to go a little bit further down on the dash. Okay, there it's sitting flush on the dash. I don't know what the French. He must have got that off of a 61. I know he said some of this trim. See how this is painted? He's got some of this trim off of a... What's a higher trim level? Bonneville? Uh, so maybe the windshield's different on a Bonneville? Anywho, that ain't gonna work. And I can't find the painted ones. And I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. But guess what I did find? Rear window trim. And I found the A-pillar trim doohickey, this guy, up here. And I found a bunch of hardware taped to that, wrapped in masking tape, and then duct tape wrapped around it. So got the correct hardware, most of it, and that stuff. Here's uh, the trim that goes around the back window, I believe. See, there's the factory Catalina trim. And there's the Bonneville trim, or it's a higher, maybe it's Tempest trim, something like that. I got a decision to make. I think I'm going to go with the aluminum, and we'll hang on to the uh, steel stuff. But I'm guessing that's what happened here, was he saved this stuff out of that car, but it don't freaking fit, and I can't find the steel stuff. So that kind of sucks, but we're making progress. And we got a spare one of these for the inside. So we'll label that and put it in the swap meat pile. And their swap meat pile is getting lower. I think this, I figured, finally figured out what these are. They're like dividers that go between, I'll show you. They go between the uh, door panel and the back seat. I think this is the glass rail for that uh, tailgate for a square body K5 Blazer. But yeah, I couldn't figure out what these were. I got white ones, I got gray ones, I got blue ones. And Duff knew exactly what they were when we put the back seat in. Now these little guys right here, you can't really see on this car, but... Anywho, our door panels are tan, so we're going to leave the tan ones in there. Oh, it looks so bad with a tan door panel and blue seats, doesn't it? Oh well, we're getting there, Duff. Cackle burrs? Where did you get the cackle burr, you goof? You gotta stay out of the cackle burrs. Yuck. All right, back to putting trim on. Hey, I found a clip for this. So we got that trim piece on. I got our sill plates both on. These holes are kind of wallered out, so we didn't get all the screws in there, did we, Duff? We got our rear view mirror situated. It just needed to be, had the screw removed, set her into place. It's kind of a terrible design. It just kind of wedges on a clamp. Or I don't know how you want to wedges on that side and then you suck it tight with that screw it's, it's not ideal just put two freaking screws in there who cares if you see the screws but 
Anyway, that's solved. I think I want to get the door panels on it. So we quit. They're out of the way. That door is hitting up against them. And yeah, they're in the way. And it'll clean up this interior a bunch. So that's what we're going to do next. Door panels. I'm sure they got a gazillion clips in them. Perfect. Awesome. How do we get those door handles off? We got to get those off. Oh, we got to take these off. I can manage that though. What do we got? Jesus clips? No clips. Set screw? What's holding you on? Jesus clips. Got the Jesus clip tool out. Pew! Across the floor. You know, if we really cared about our lives, we could probably take some steel wool to that. She's kind of pitted up. Looks like the skin of one of them humpback whales. Got the mosses growing on it. Getting all the crap out of the bottom of the door while we're here. One last chance for that. Oh, oh, oh. oh man. Old school. Somebody had themselves a sandwich in the 60s in this hot rod. Probably won't be the last one. Like all door panels, especially GM door panels, these things are pretty chewy, especially on the bottom. But it'll fill a hole. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> the problem with them sitting for so long is they're kind of warped. So. I don't want to lay against the door real nice. Oh yeah, they're bowed real bad. Oh, and of course that, well, it's not particle board, not like cardboard. As soon as you try pushing it in shape, it starts cracking and whatnot. So I think we're just gonna get some big screws and washers and DD hack shop it on there for now. Obviously an extra hole in this door panel isn't gonna hurt anything. And uh, a screw hole on the inside of the door ain't gonna hurt. Nothing either. Good enough for the girls we go with anyway. Yeah, they're just, ain't nothing there to attach it. All the tits on the panel are gone and the clips are all cracked out on this side. And like I said, it's warped. And there's actually screws that are supposed to hold it on the bottom, but the bottom of the door that would have held the screws is uh, not with us any longer. There we go. You can't even hardly tell. A couple of those, we're good to go. Put one more in the middle, right in that chrome strip. Nobody will ever notice. All right, here's the finishing touch. White frickin' armrests. I couldn't find any blue ones. There's, yeah, a set of black ones. And then these, I bet these were the original ones. That probably would go with the tan, better than blue. Anywho, uh, they're kind of busted up, but you gotta have these to pull the freaking door shut. There's nothing to grab onto up here and you pull on the handle, bad things happen eventually. We all know that. So let's get these things on there. Hopefully this is the right hardware. Cause of course, you know, that was scattered everywhere. One eternity later. Duh, these screws suck. I don't know if something's warped or what, but we're not. We can get one, we can't get them both. I don't know, armrests suck, okay? I think it's the angle that they put the screws in that really screws me up. The scratch all goes in, but the screw does not. Wow, for cheese and rice. Oh. 
got it. Just had to get out the old screw gun. I don't know why. Real good. That ain't going nowhere. He's going nowhere. Where you going? Nowhere. All right, let's go to the other side. I suppose we better see if it shuts. Good enough for the girls we go with. That's freaking work, Duff. I'm sweating. And this side's in uh, way better shape. There's plenty of material on the bottom, so there's actually a screw hole already there. And there's a screw hole already up there, so we didn't really ruin it. I wish the other panel was that nice. I wish the other armrest was this. I wish this armrest was as nice as the other one. And I wish the other sill plate was as nice as this one. We're missing the uh, Body by Fisher plate in there, but I think you can get those. Get some good progress. But I've been feeling a little under the weather lately, and uh, so yeah, I don't want to come out here and get mojo sick, so I've been taking it easy doing book work during the day and relaxing and catching up on the History Channel and emails and comments and all that good stuff. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I can come back out here and finally get a full day's work in and not get mojo sick and get rid of this. There's a lot of this going around. I went to a four-year-old's birthday party this weekend, and it was also my buddy's 40th, and it was his daughter's fourth birthday party good time but i'm paying for it now my throat it's on fire and so are all my joints sucks getting old and sick but anyway pretty good progress feels good to uh get a few of these little things god dang it why didn't i put the freaking uh, lock cylinder in there i do have the glove box and the uh latch for that to put in so we should do that now the speaker grill is all bent up, so we'll use this one as a template or just put a blue one in there since this thing is so mismatched anyway and pick away at it. But yeah, we're getting a pile of stuff for uh, spare parts, spare dash, trim, manifolds. I haven't figured out what I want to do there. A lot of people send some good suggestions. I don't want to spend a ton of money on something that ain't going to fit. So yeah, I've got to figure out something there. But table's getting a little emptier. Most of this stuff is all extra, so we stash her away. All right, I'll see you in the morning, hopefully. Unless I die in my sleep, but I think we'll make it. We'll pull through. Oh yeah, and the uh, Shriners dropped this off today. We uh, sponsored the, uh, God, they put the freaking label on crooked. Well, maybe it's pretty straight, but anyway, I forget what it is. A few bucks sponsor these guys. If you don't know what the uh, Shriners are, they're uh, a bunch of volunteers that Raise, there you go. Sp sponsors attendance to the Shrine Circus for needy, underprivileged individuals. Anyway, they raise money and they got Shriners Hospitals. It it's, uh, helps kids out. My grandpa was a Shriner when I was a kid. I played in the Shrine football game the summer of 2003. I'm freaking old and I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was like an all-star football game, but uh, it, which is kind of what it is, but it's a big fundraiser. So it's a really good thing. If you got something like that in your area, go check them out. Send a few bucks their way. It's a, it's a good deal. I should probably join, but I just, I don't have time. I, I, got, I got more money than time, so I'll just give them the money and stay out of their way. Right, Duff? The old Shrine Circus. Giving back when we can. Back picking away at this pile, it's raining, so Duff's a real swamp donkey today. And Mojo's cutting ridges on a 390 Cadillac engine. Anyway, there's 13 holes for this trim. Uh, one had eight, one had nine pieces of or clips in it. So we're gonna pop these clips out of these guys because we don't want these pieces of trim falling off because we don't have spares. So that's what I'm gonna do. Take some trim clips off these four-door pieces of trim, put them on these two-door pieces of trim, and hopefully get that trim on there. I don't think we're gonna be able to do these top pieces of trim because it's like a if it's anything like the door panels they have these little plastic clips these are super brittle as soon as you push the male end in there they just bust all apart and there's pretty much all of them are missing there's 
three out of the whatever well, there's a few more up there but anyway this big stretch they're missing and then the it's almost like a nail on the door panels we're missing those so we got to get new pieces of trim here or these clips new clips for that can't put those on so we're just gonna have to keep tripping over those and storing them but we'll try to get these on there that'll tire together a little bit all right let's do that and we're gonna use our screwed by Mortski repair screwdriver works real handy get yours at mortski.com all you gotta do to pop these out of there reach in there with your screwdriver this one kind of narrows down so we'll cheat we'll slide her over she gets a little chubbier and then just spin her counterclockwise pops right out put it back in stick it in there spin her clockwise that spring tab underneath a bada bing a bada boom bada bing bada boom there's have a little breakfast snack over there making some noise anywho no i wish i wouldn't roll on there with marker tech tip you just write over it with marker again and it wipes right off i could have cleaned it up there's a little tape residue on there but let's be honest the rest of the car isn't that great so we got those out of the way i think we're gonna put her on the lift get this fuel pump on there so we can put our nice bent line on there Put our uh, shocks on, low radiator hose, check the brakes out, harmonic balancer, all that good stuff. But come a long way on the trim. I got that other piece of top glass trim on it. We gotta get clips for this, definitely. We're gonna have to pull the door panel off in order to get that clip off. Should do those lock cylinders, but otherwise, other than these guys that are MIA, we're, uh, Pretty much wrapped up antenna but seems how we got a radio delete car we'll have to figure out something there maybe we'll put a dummy antenna i say dummy and you show up huh what do you think put one of those little 50 caliber bullet ones like all the whistling diesel fans got yeah probably not that's pretty good i can't believe we found pretty much all the trim i can't believe that we're missing those two big long pieces and there must be something here i'm guessing it's that triangle that pontiac has we'll do a little digging i'm guessing at some point we'll come across a four-door parts car and we'll uh, have to purchase that just for hardware and that piece right there should be the same two-door four-door bonneville everything i would imagine we'll have to get that and that but much better eh duff yeah all right, let's do some mechanicals. I'm sick of doing trim. Yuck. First thing we're going to do is get this fuel pump swapped out so we can get rid of all this ugly rubber hose and go to some hard line. I don't know why it's leaking. I'm guessing it has something to do with me using the wrong fitting. I thought it was inverted flare, but maybe it's just a regular pipe fitting we put in there for the time being. But as you can see, we got a leak. We don't like leaks. All right, let's get that swapped out. Sure enough, part number M6803 comes with two gaskets as well, I guess. Somebody said that there's some type of isolator, insulator, something or other that comes on some fuel pumps, and that's why you need two gaskets. I've replaced a lot of fuel pumps, and never once have I seen a uh, insulator, isolator, spacer that required two gaskets. I started slathering my gaskets up in Vaseline a while back because we screw up a lot and uh, sure makes it a lot easier to remove. 
tech tip of the day, slather up your gasket, especially something you might actually remove in the future, like a intake gasket or a carburetor gasket, something like that, if you're gonna swap intakes, carbs, all that. Get some Vaseline, keep on the shelf, or some Studio Selection, 100% pure petroleum jelly. Yeah, helps protect minor cuts, scrapes, and burns. I guess that's what it's for. Weird, never done that before. All right, let's put our uh, new fuel pump with correct fuel outlet location on there, or better outlet location, I guess. Where the French is my hardware? There it is. Oh, what the? Oh my gosh. So these bolts are 3 eighths, and this thing is only drilled out to 5 sixteenths. And I ordered it for a 78 Trans Am Firebird, whatever, with a 400. So I guess we're gonna have to ream those out. I don't know if that's poor manufacturing there that they didn't drill them out all the way, or did the uh, later 400s use 5 sixteenths hardware? Either way, that's interesting. Hopefully somebody else just screwed up because the problem with reaming these out is if this ever fails on the road and I go to grab a new one, if they were to have one, which I doubt they would on a Saturday afternoon at some auto zone, uh, the holes are going to be the wrong size. Great. Always something. Haven't used a reamer for a while though, so give us a good chance to utilize those. And everybody wonders why I'm grumpy. Probably because I buy new parts and they don't fit. That's why I'm so angry. Mama says that alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. Medulla oblongata. All better. Make sure you get all them metal shavings inside your engine. Alright, we're going to take this crusty old lower hose off and sneak one of the seven other options on there. Got myself a ginormous, well it's a shallow tote I guess is what it is. Works great as a drain pan. You almost can't miss. Almost. There you go, low radiator hose, part number 20345 off a of 65 GTO. I think those cars still had 389s. Had to do a little trimming. Get yourself one of these radiator hose trimmer thingers. I don't know where I got it. Probably Amazon. Had it for 100 years, but cuts the hose off nice and flush. Worked good on heater hoses, too. Doesn't look like a rat chewed the thing off. Take this quarter. Go downtown and have a rat gnaw that thing off your face. Good day to you, madam. Yeah, looks like you know what you're doing. Way better than the uh, old. The old one wasn't bad. It was The hose is getting bad, but it looked good on here anyway. I just got to slip a couple hose clamps on, maybe peel that label off. Those things are getting harder and harder to get off all the time. That's the beauty of these videos is I get to uh, document the part number radiator hose I'm using so that... If it ever should fail in the future, I remember what part number hose to order put on the thing. Except for I'll have to watch a two hour video to find the part number. A smart guy would like document all this stuff, keep a notebook or something. All right, let's put some shocks on. The front ones, you just open the book and order them. We got Monroe's, because I like them because they're black. The pictures on the uh, Rock Auto said they're black. Sure enough, 
not a, not a big uh, obnoxious red yellow shock person 5801 part number rears however we had to go off of dimensions so hopefully old napa todd got us the right ones these are a little bit more expensive because we had to go through the old napa but these are probably built by somebody else other than napa let's see if he got let's see if he knows that i like black shocks and i cannot lie prc b 45 yes all right well i guess let's lift her up in the air see if they fit Ooh, got a pot county seat cover for this thing and uh man that air filter looks like she's been on the shelf for a while that's for the 65 gto for that air cleaner we got so let's do some shocks got her coolant back in Changed oil on it because everybody's like, oh, when you flood an engine full of coolant, you got to change oil. Yeah, you're probably right. So we did it anyway. And what else? Oh, made a mess. Some oil back there. Uh, output shaft seal on the Super T10's leaking a shift shaft seal. So you're going to have to get some of those ordered. Freaking leaks. But while we got her on the ground, let's take the uh, top hardware loose on the shocks. And we'll lift it up in the air and we should be able to drop them right out. Well, we got the top hardware loose. We just got to take these two little 5 16 fine thread nylock nuts off. The whole thing should just drop right out. These do look like newer shocks, not the OEMs. I don't believe they had nylocks in 1962. I take that back. They probably did, but they definitely weren't on Pontiacs. That's the beauty of the nylock. We're going to have to hold the top. How are we going to do that? And that right there is how you uh, resolve lock nuts that don't want to come off. Now, just drop out of there. Just to like so. Don't grab the bolts. Hey, there's a threaded nut insert up there already. Wonder why they aren't using those if they're stripped out or didn't have the right size hardware. Or what? Now let's see if the passenger side still retains the standard nut encapsulated procedure-ness thing. There should be a nut that's welded on to the lower control arm that has threads in it. But I guess they fail after 62 years. There you go. That makes life way easier. Oh yeah. They're Monroe's. They were yellow. But uh, old Terrence made them black. Let's see if they... I don't know. They don't extend on their own. I think they were due for replacement. Right, slider. Formed washer on and our rubber. Which way does that go? That way. And we uh, do the same thing on the top once we get it up there. Hopefully this thing's the right length. It's Dispectrum. Never heard of such a thing. I'm sure they're nothing but the finest rock auto shocks that the internet has to offer. This thing's gonna handle so awesome. Better than probably ever other 62 Catalina in the township. Let's keep our hardware in good shape. Put a little croil on them. And then snap it off with the 3 Ace Milwaukee. And we gotta figure out what to do with this side. Can't really put a nut up there. Hmm. I can't put one of those clip nut things in there because uh, the old ones are in the way. I don't know what it would take to get those out of there. Air hammer? Let's try that. If we were doing a full rest though, I would take this control arm off and rebuild it and we would grind these old nuts off and just tack all new ones on there and be good to go. But 
We don't do that. I wonder how good these are welded on. Here goes nothing. Got it. That one's kind of ground off at an angle, so I got no good way to bite into it. Hmm. I, could, oh, I can't even stick the gas axe in there and cut it off because there's no room to get in through here and then the spring encapsulates it the whole rest of the way around for cheese and rice. Well, we got ourselves in quite the little predicament here. Quite a predicament you're in. Can't get a grinder in there to cut it off. Get yourself a set of these pry bars that you can whack the end with. You won't regret it. This isn't going well. You know these bars are old, they're by Craftsman, back when Craftsman was awesome. Just kidding, Craftsman's probably still awesome. I haven't bought any for a long time. Ah, oh, for five, six. This is ridiculous. This guy must have been Pontiac's best spot welder in the whole entire division. All right, we are resorting to melting. So I think we'll do now is we'll just set some whiz nuts up there, suck it into that, and that'll give it plenty more years of serviceable use. And when we completely restore this car from top to bottom in uh, the year 2083, we will definitely find a new lower control arm or uh, just spot weld some nuts underneath there. Or maybe we'll do that when we convert it to disc brakes in 2074. How many years is 2074? This car will be 112 by then. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that in 50 years. Okay. That was fun. I was just looking at the box on these things. You know, like I said, Rock Auto Specials. Internet! AKA crappier packaging and cheaper quality probably look at that who came up with that in marketing the old safety triangle steering stopping and stability way to go munro Mun it's an old freaking gm pleasurizer made in usa though how about that what a deal internet i don't get what that's all about it's like they Take the blems and instead of putting blem on it they just put ah sell it on the internet old guys don't care and let's burn our fingers on the crack pipe how are we gonna do this i don't know way to get my fingers in there all right i think i got some of them clip nut thingies hopefully i got some in the uh 516 coarse thread sizage I don't know, I call these clip nuts. We're gonna try these guys. It should work just fine. Come on. Son of a... Dang, these things got some bite to them. And of course they stuck out too far to clear the shock body. How? How do I get myself in these situations? Maybe we can take them out of there, get the shock in there, and then slide them in place. This is probably why people drive late models with warranty and such. So they don't hate their lives. Oh, coley dokely. Oakley dokely. And we just sh sh slip that in there. I said slip. So now I'll be the one to figure out that once I slide these in there, Somehow this thing will slide out, even though I couldn't slide it in. Don't put it in upside down, dum-dum. Not gonna be happy about that. Go to your home. Don't you know where your hole is? Why didn't you just go home? That's your home! 
Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Ugh. Right. Now. Make some magic happen. I am the smartest man alive! I am the smartest man alive! All right, let's go see if the rear shocks are gonna be more cooperative. Ooh, these uh, air dogs here, I forget. The rear end is actually hanging on them right now. So we actually need to lift the rear end up to get it off of that stud. I don't know if it's because they're too short or if that's how they designed it as the shock was the uh, limiting factor on how far the rear end can hang down. But yeah, well that one wasn't doing nothing. Let's get these things out of there. So like I said, we got the stud on the bottom. And then uh, there's a through bolt in the top. That thing's gonna be a real treat to sneak out of there. It's gonna be fun just to try to get up there and wrench on it. Based on what I've seen on the top side, I can see why they only use that design on 1962 because it's it's pretty miserable. I'm sure they put these things on for the body. Awesome. Oh hey, look! I only put it finger tight. Oh, I took off last time. I'm always planning ahead for a future Morski. Saving him time, making him look good. Where do we go? I'm gonna get that stupid top bolt out of there. Oh yeah, that must have been designed that way to hold the rear end in place because this thing will drop way down. These upper control arms are binding on the exhaust now. Better not go down any further. Give him a little croil, hopefully. If we do get him a spin, though, let's walk right out of there. Yeah, right, wishful thinking. Well, it's turning. Ugh. Is the whole bolt turning? Probably. By golly, oh, no, it is. Oh, thank goodness this is not a rusty car. If it was, we would be in trouble. There's not even a good way to cut these things out of here. Oh, I hope it's not seized inside of the bushing. I'm gonna try getting it to budge with this cute little pry bar. Cutest little pry bar you ever did see, made by Tecton. Oh yeah, there we go. Just keep walking. Keep walking. The walk of shame. There we go. Oh no. Oh, it stopped. Come on. Yes! Success. Great success. So here's what you see a lot of uh, on suspension parts. This bolt will rust to this steel bushing and then it'll just spin inside of this rubber bushing. And this is, uh, there's an eyelet on either end of this bolt and you can't get it to slide out either way, so we lucked out with this thing. But yeah, that bushing is loose in there, which is fine, but yeah, it's always a good idea to put a little anti-seize on these bolts so that it doesn't seize to that bushing. We'll definitely do that. Probably forget. Let's see how bad these shocks are. Oh yeah, these air shocks never were as good as your standard shocks in my opinion, but what do I know? All right, let's get a new one up there. Hopefully it fits. The bottom eyelet is the right size, top one's not. So we gotta take this bushing out and put it in there. Uh, new one, easy enough. Put that bushing in there. It actually looks like somebody Put a lock and players on this. Ripped it out of the previous shock. Because clearly the air shocks were not factory on the old Katarina.
apparently these shocks are a little bit shorter even though I gave them the extended and retracted dimensions shouldn't be a problem as so long as when you jack the car up you can still get the wheel and tire off because I don't want to be having to take the shock off every time I change the wheel and tire well you know bueno Side down on the go. Oh yes, we can cut these silly airlines out of here now. I don't know why the other side wasn't working. Melted right under the exhaust. Tech tip of the day: always run your plastic airlines a long ways away from hot and or moving and or sharp components. going to wrap up our shock installation this thing's going to handle like she's on rails all right oh my gosh look at all that brake material on these things anyway it looks like it's got newer wheel cylinders new shoes the grease is like new it's got new seals new hoses we saw that but i just wanted to make sure everything was kosher in here make sure adjusters loose but also these cars had left-handed thread on the left-hand side so they swapped those out for right-hand thread and tack welded them in place, which I'm totally cool with. Everything's nice and smooth on that drum. So I think we're just gonna throw her back together. We'll hang on to the seal and everything else. It's got regular roller bearings. It doesn't have those silly ball bearings that are super expensive and unobtainium. We lucked out there, didn't we? Such a fine young man with your paws crossed. Oh yeah, we stuck some hubcaps on the old 36 and sent the seat off for upholstery. Finally, we're now something with a nice seat around here for you to ruin. All right, that rear brake hose is definitely not new, so we're going to put that on there while we're inspecting brakes. And I'm guessing that seal between the rear end and the uh, center section is leaking because I cleaned this all up on the last video. Perfect. That means we got to pull the axles, pull that out, pull the drive shaft out, and uh, reseal that with some right stuff. Definitely won't be doing that anytime soon. Duff says we gotta have a choke because we drive it when it's cold out. And uh, I put out a shout out in the last video for what you guys like. Somebody sent me this, it's for Weber carburetors. And it actually looks pretty legit heavy duty. And there's the part number if you're interested. But I don't like the way the knob looks on it. And I know you can hide them under the dash. And I was going through some other junk the other day. And I found this guy. I think it's off of like a 61 to 66 Ford pickup, but maybe fits something else too. Anyway, it's in good shape. It uh, kind of fits the rest of the car, you know, the rattiness. There's a bunch of holes in the firewall already from the factory. I don't know if that was for AC brackets or who knows. So I just took my scratch owl, poked a hole. That one pretty much lines up right with our 750 Edelbrock. So we're gonna sneak that cable through there. We're using that to mark it on the back side. And then I think what I'm gonna try to do is just drill a hole in this gauge set. And that way we don't have to drill a hole in our dash or find another bracket or anything. And uh, just sneak her right in there. And that hole comes through the firewall. I'm right behind the glove box here. So good thing we haven't put that in. And then we'll just drill a hole right there that good to go like it was meant to be i don't love those gauges but they're already there we can always change it later so let's uh choke it 
what's in the ashtray did we ever check probably not so first thing i'm gonna do is uh just fish that choke cable through that hole in the firewall and then kind of lay it out inside see if it's long enough first before i go drilling a bunch of holes and then if it's long enough then we'll drill a hole in our silly little uh aftermarket gauge cluster and then we'll hook it is that a good idea you're all about crossing your paws today All right, I think we got her pretty much wrapped up the old choke situation. To be honest, I'm kind of a automatic choke guy. I just, between cables, poor quality, not matching the rest of the gauge cluster, drilling a hole in the dash, drilling a hole in the firewall, mounting bracket, all that stuff. I'm just kind of a automatic choke type of guy. But then again, there's wiring involved with that and they're kind of finicky as well. But anyway, got this hooked up. I went underneath and I got her all kind of laid out how I wanted it and then I was going to put like a double bend in there to sneak through the bracket there instead of having any type of clamp to uh, hold on to that lever arm and it must, I suppose it's some type of spring steel or something that rod going through there and snapped off. But luckily enough I saved myself some room so I slid her head, put those, that double bend in there and if it wasn't going to work then, then we were just going to throw it away and use that other cable but that other cable is way thicker and it's actual cable, it's not like a a steel rod so i don't know how that was going to work we'd have made something work but anyway we got her hooked up and she works all right let's go inside and i'll see if it works Whee! choke me daddy you must be daddy there we go one more item off the list got the glove box all bloated out now we gotta do a little screwing in this thing there's a whole pile of screws holding that thing first screw in this thing's probably seen in quite a while and we got to put screws all the way around the dash in there before we do that i want to fix this speaker cover somebody tried prying it out of there and so i'm gonna unbolt it properly and see if we can't straighten it out because that's going to annoy me so this should be fun it's laying upside down underneath the dash That was fun. These things got some clip retainer things and they like to spin. So, let's see if we can't get this straightened out. Slide it back on there. You can see somebody got mad at this one and just pried the snot out of it. So, let's see if we can't get her straightened back out. Or better yet, let's just put a blue one on. This thing's all mismatched anyway. Blow all the crap out of there while we're in here, huh? Well, that was miserable. 42 different sizes of sockets later, 18 trips in and out of the vehicle. Mojo's back there carving something into stone instead of sending his wife a text message. Whew. We got a speaker deck cover thinger grill on there. That ain't as bad, even though it's the wrong color. Maybe he's. Oh. He's sending Morse code to his old lady. Morse code. Telling her uh, that he wants mashed potatoes and roast beef for lunch. All right, let's uh, put a whole bunch of screws in this dash. There's like 964 screws in it. Get that screwed in place. And then we'll go to the glove box. Fun times. Look at this handy little magnetic lever down here on the floor. Still sending Morse codes out to Linda. 
I swear we had it in place at one point. The principle is that this is out of a uh, Catalina or uh, Monoville. Oh, that should be it. Maybe. Oh, for cheese and rice back there. That's a lot of typing to get lunch. Is it just aftermarket and that's what the deal is? I don't know, let's try to get a couple screws in there. Go from there. All right, I think we got all the screws, most of them. All of them, the cluster, the dash, the panel to the dash surround. I don't know, now we got a, there's screws that hold that to the padded dash. So we gotta figure out where screw goes. And find them, Mojo says, via the Morse code. Do you know Morse code? I feel like it's kind of a lost art. Google Translate probably knows though. Now we got a handful of miscellaneous screws. Let's see if any of them work. We just need like four times as many as I have. Five times, Mojo says. All right, now no more dash flying off. Hitting Duff in the face when we do clutch jumps in first gear on the highway. All right, here we go, Duff. Ready? Let's stick a glove box in there so we can get insurance cards and registration cards and all that legality stuff in there. What's he tapping on now? That's a new noise. I'm gonna get a little stubby screwdriver and get some screws out of this glove box compartment so we can put the new one in. I'm guessing the old one got torn out and the one we got over there isn't out of this car. So we should have extra screws, which is the first because we didn't have enough screws for anything else we did. There's the mojo we missed. Oh, well, the torch is out. Tech tip of the day, if a stubby screwdriver isn't stubby enough, get yourself a bit and a quarter inch socket and a quarter inch ratchet. Snug them up that way. But you already knew that. Apparently it wasn't uh, persuasive enough with a hammer so now the torch is out over at the other end of the ship. Duff's not happy about it. We gotta get them uh, pot county seat covers on this thing. This stuff's turned into uh, cornstarch on the back of my pants, ain't it Duff? Plus, you get more torque on these things, so it's really hard for them to get out for the next person. And, I wonder what the hook and loop tape here is for. It must have been for a CB radio. It's dual ashtray. This one's still got a few darts in there. Marlboros and some matches. Hey, get your matches at musky.com. Yeah, we're going to empty that out. Or dump it on the floor. Look at this. We got a latch too for the old glove box. We are right uptown. So the strange thing about these glove boxes, and a lot of glove boxes, is they lock. Who locks a glove box? I figure if you got something in your car that people you don't want them to have, you're gonna lock the doors. And if they get through that and they get into the car, it's all if they're smart enough to get into the car, they're gonna get into your glove box. So why do they why do they lock these? Because you got annoying people in the passenger seat named Tyler playing with all the switches and opening your glove box and you don't want them opening your glove box. Is that why? Why isn't this one open now? Is it because they got that? Oh, oh, there it is. No darts in this one. It's got the 
the the double putter outers and just one holder in the middle though. What was the last year of ashtrays? Well, it's all about cup holders. We went from crappy no cup holders and tons of ashtrays. Does this got them in the back seat? Oh yeah, of course they're in the back seat. There's probably some in the center here too. To uh, lots of cup holders and no ashtrays. Oh, how the times have changed. Oh yeah. Probably the first time in 40 years that thing's latched. done screwing in this interior for a while hit us up mortgagerepair at gmail.com if you've got park lights trunk trim a really nice steering wheel or a better steering wheel a pillar trim what else are we looking for i think that's about it i mean it's not but that's what i can think of uh -oh. air hose is coming out now getting serious over there look at all that uh, cornstarch coming out of the seat we're gonna need to get that uh, redone, ain't we, Duff? Next, we're gonna carry the old plastic oil pressure line and put a copper one on. And the reason we're doing that is those white plastic ones break down just like white plastic zip ties or anything plastic. They're not legal at the drag track, so if you know we ever wanna go make a 16 second pass on the old 400 Pontiac, we can't have that thing on there anyway. So. And plus, if that thing fails and I'm not watching the gauge, which I never do, rarely, we're going to dump out all the oil very slowly. And it, it might get on my uh, new balances that we're driving down the road in. So let's get that out of there and put this one in there. And then we should be good to go for many, many years to come. This thing is uh, Equius Performance, part number 9901. You got six feet of tubing. So it should be more than enough. I'm guessing that's what the... Uh, clear one was pretty easy to install even I can screw it up so let's lift this thing up in the air take it off the bottom side fish her through the firewall looks like they got it running all the way over up top there and then fish back that way so we'll see if we can't find a shorter route what say you duff oh, you moved over there huh all right copper let's do it make our own moonshine still here I've done some keg wall she'd hit every lick that did Told you I changed that oil. Took the Delco filter off. Oop, got the drill out now over there. So we're gonna take this little guy off here and get rid of this and put copper on there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I bet DD Speed Shop uses this stuff like it's flex seal. Blah. And this fitting that comes with the kit, same as what's already in there. So we don't even have to take that out. It's not leaking now, so let's not make it leak. Now I'm going to straighten this coil out, and we're going to fish it through the firewall. And get it hooked up inside the car. And we'll have the excess coming out the bottom. Trim it off. And we'll hook it up down by the oil filter. And all you got to do, slide your nut, your ferrule on there, tighten it up. If you do have to cut one of these, make sure you use a tubing cutter. You can't just snip it off with a side cutter or you'll pinch it and then it'll never make a good crimp. And what I did here is the end of the line was so close and plus I wanted to put this little coil there so as the engine vibrates, that coil will take up the dampening. Mojo's over there playing the flute, practicing anyway. Anywho, that's about it. Tighten her up. You can't, you don't have to flare these, so you can't forget to put the nut on before you flare it. You don't have to get them too tight. It's copper, so it's pretty soft. Not as soft as plastic. And there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Make sure it's not rubbing on your Nunzi Romano headers. I had a bunch of people that want to buy those things, but I think shipping would be a killer, and I would rather nobody ever had to enjoy the displeasure of owning them ever again and we got to find something else to put on here first so if you got some ram air cast iron manifolds that fit or some other well flowing manifolds that you want to trade hit us up mortgagerepair at gmail.com maybe we can work something out but the old nunzi romanos are going to stay on here for now i guess 
Let's get this out of here. Speaking of not staying on here for now, though, the old white plastic oil pressure line's going away. And we also might want to check for leaks on this. I'm sure there won't be any, though. This week's Morski Minute is brought to you by none other than Nunzi Automotive. That's right, the same guy who made these headers, a Nunzi Ata Romano. How much more Italian do you get than that? This guy was based out of Brooklyn, New York. RIP passed away in 2022 at the ripe young age of 74 years old. Nunzi Romano was the premier Pontiac tuner east of the Mississippi. You go ahead and look it up. This guy was great at recurving distributors, dialing in quadra jets, maybe doing some whispering to the old EGR, or just screaming at it to uh, get right off of his Pontiac. But this guy did some really amazing things over the years. These headers might not have been one of them, but uh, he was the Pontiac go-to guy. He had all kinds of mail order items that were available. This guy did some pretty crazy things. He, he had the first Pontiac-powered car to run in the 11s, none other than a 1962 Pontiac Catalina, much like the one that we're working on this week. He had the first, first gen, 67 to 69, Pontiac Firebird, it was a 67 Pontiac in this case, to run in the uh, low 10s. He had the first Pontiac powered car to run in the 9s with a four barrel carburetor. And last but not least, this is one of his uh, last pet projects. He had a 1963 Pontiac Tempest, four cylinder, four speed, four barrel. He was running in the 11s with this thing. So this guy was the king of speed. He knew how to go fast, and he loved doing it in a Pontiac. This guy is in the Drag Racing Hall of Fame, so big shout out to Annunziata Romano. Not only the most Italian name that I've ever heard in my life, but a huge loss to the uh, Pontiac community. And uh, that's this week's Mortsky Minute. Live from the CHOP 1949 Ford F1 pickup, collecting dust over in the corner. Wonder how the sound quality is. I can hear the furnace just fired up. Now back to your regularly scheduled shenanigans. Mojo says it's time to try to fire up this 283. Yeah, there isn't much in there. You know, we got all these lights above us. Yeah. You wouldn't have to use a flashlight if you turn them on. <laughs> we have the technology. You paid your electricity bill? <laughs> Dang right. You ain't getting paid this month. Okay. Yeah. You it up, then. Did you fix that fuel leak? Yes, I did. What was it? Fuel pump. That brand new fuel pump? Just throw it in the trash then? I should. You didn't. No, I'll try it over here. Probably don't want this fuel hose rubbing on the exhaust, but what do I know? Jeepers, you got a heavy enough throttle return spring bracket? Well, sure. You didn't want to keep it Well, it's got fuel. Oh, it's close. Uh oh. Oh! Who tied that distributor down so tight? Spark. How come spark dropped out? You don't got it hooked up to the accessory side, do you? There we go. Now we got the whole thing. Ready? Put it on the power side. I just saw an arc. I'm gonna have to give Mojo lessons on Wiring. crimping wires. Smile for the flash. Well, I guess you're gonna have to fix that before we can fire it up. So this is a 283 out of that 38 Ford pickup. We had the heads all redone with new valve seats, valves, guides, everything. Bottom end, we reblocked it and slid the Crower 310 camshaft in this thing. I think this one's hydraulic lifter. 
It's got a huge lift cam, little tiny heads, and a stock bottom end. No, this is all that 283. The bottom end was good. We just had to go through the heads. And I don't remember what cam is in this one. It's a big one. And Mojo can't find his tools. Then uh, these were the valve covers on it, intake was on it. We just cleaned it all up. And apparently the new fuel pump we put on it's leaking. Threw an Edelbrock carburetor on it. This engine never had a carburetor on it when I got it. And we threw a similar distributor to what come with it, a dual point Mallory. It's not the same one that was in this engine, but it's the same part number, actually. Because we couldn't find that one, but we've since found it. My concern with this thing is, it's a huge cam. I think it's got flat top pistons in it, high dome pistons. Anyway, it just seems like a mishmash of parts and it looked like it was fired, but never really run. So we're about to find out if it will and if it's any good. I don't know much about these dual point distributors. I don't know the reasoning behind them. Apparently they thought one set of points is good, two is better. Yeah, and this stuff's all like brand new. I don't know where I come across that. Picked it up, reason, oh, I was in an auction. Walter, an old co-worker, picked this up as part of an auction from Steve Ellison Estate. <coughs> now we should have spark. Oh yeah. So what's the advantage of dual point distributors? Why do they got... What's better about two points? sets of points than one. Take your coil more time to build up. More time? Sounds like half as much time. Supposed to be better as spark. I... You don't believe in them either. Yeah, really. You got fuel. goes zing and shuts off. What's going on? I don't know. One. Well, that don't help. Okay, what do you got? Okay, where's, where's one? Oh, I'm back. Here's one right here. Well? Is that the belt a little too tight? Is this got hydraulic? How'd you adjust them? The bottom? Yep. 30 thousandths. I guess I go until you feel a little resistance and then yep. give her half a turn. I don't, it seems like it wants to go and then stops. So I don't know, it seems like it's, we're getting all kinds of fuel. I wonder if I got a different points to shoot. They're getting oil anyway. Yeah. I'm gonna take that dual point Mallory out and just drop a stock single point unknown condition GM distributor in there. Just to eliminate that. Check to see if the mark is right on the crank. Yeah, you don't know if it's lined up with top dead center though. No. No. So that's either one or one or six.
sound as good as I hoped. It's almost lazy, but we don't have a vacuum advance hooked up. But we just got a mystery distributor dropped in there. I don't think it was like in that distributor. I knew I was going to be leery about this one because, like I said, it's a bunch of fish mash parts, big cams, small engines, small heads. Stuff don't approve either. I just don't, it just seems lazy. I don't know a ton about building engines, but uh, I feel like there's too much cam, not enough compression or something. What's it sound like to you? Don't sound as good as that one. No, I don't. Oh. Remember what pistons this one had in it? This had high, high, high dome pistons, right? Yeah. It's got a big camshaft and high compression pistons and little tiny valves in it. Yeah. That came back to the valve and the rock arm. You know, a little bit. And then you got it running. Loosen them up until it's flat. I almost got to put a radiator on it to do that. I won't.
always told that when you shut them off and they stop like that, that means it's a fresh, tight engine. You ever heard that? Yeah. Makes sense, right? Makes sense. Not all sloppy and loose. Yeah. But when you put that engine under a load, it's going to be different. It's freewheeling now. Yeah. You put it under a load and then it pushes the ring down. Yep. And then when you let off on it, it creates a vacuum and it pulls the oil up onto the cylinder and lubricates the cylinder up. And then that's when you have the drive and let the car push motor. And then it sucks up the oil okay. the and lubricates it. Yep. And after it does that, so if you back through your cycle again, putting it to work, and you notice the difference, stronger, stronger it gets if you're doing it. That's the more time to do Breaking it, it in? Breaking it in, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if these heads don't have a big enough combustion chamber in them, or? It seems like it's running okay, but it's... I think it's just the wrong combination of parts. I think everything down there is fine, but it's got the wrong heads on it. You're going to punch out? Well, got a 283 running. I think, it, I think we got to get some different heads. Maybe buy some aftermarket heads on there. Something that looks like old steel heads or who knows. I got to do some more research on what those heads are. I don't know. Don't know what to do. Not like I need another 283 round anyway, but at least she runs. Could have bought some aftermarket heads for how much I stuck into those original ones. Anyway, look what we got today. Fender covers. Get yours at Mortski.com. Yeah, everybody who's got a nice shiny painted car that watches this channel, hit us up. While we got them, because I want to get them out of here, because they're going to take up space and, uh, these things were not cheap. They're nice. Nice heavy ones. Took us a while to find, find some that we like. It's got a 34 Ford logo on it. Played around with the logo. Mike Yips made that for us. So yeah. Check them out. But I think we're uh, about out of time for the week. Mojo's punching out for the week. We got a lot of trim put on this thing. We got some interior in it. We got the dash back together. Car bonnet, fuel pump shocks in it the shocks ain't the right shocks we set her on the ground and it doesn't even raise the wheels up when you push down on the back end i'll show you it it's the shocks are limiting it so old napa todd screwed us again he's got new ones should be here tomorrow you gotta get the right length shocks if they're too short then uh you can't get full extension if they're too long you're gonna be bottoming out the shocks is what it is. I gave him the right dimensions, call oh, dang it, that top. So if you're working on one of these, don't use that part number that I told you. But anyway, I think that's where we're gonna wrap her up. No uh, test drive this week. We kinda had some weather move in. We got some snow. Finally. But the plows are out, so they got salt on the roads. We got the boats and hose flag up this week. Got the D100 back. Oh, how's it going, pal? Just wrapping the video here. You wanna jump in on it? No? So yeah, I don't wanna go for a test drive and get salt underneath that car because it's just too dang nice of a car, Duff says. But yeah, go check out the merch. We got stocking caps, we got sweatshirts, we got matches, we got banners, we got fender covers, uh, magnetic can koozies, magnetic screwdrivers, you name it, we got it. If we don't got it, you don't need it. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. It's just a lot of work to restore a car. Just putting a car back together when it shows up in pieces is a lot of work. So I mean, you could, there could be a month's worth of videos just on polishing trim and replacing clips and cleaning up clips and all that good stuff. Same deal with that steering column. 
I was just uh, had some friends stop over and redoing seats. You could you could do a whole series just on recovering the seats and making new seat covers and fixing the foam and fixing springs and lubricating and sandblast and paint and weld. And that's why I'll probably never have never do a nicer store car because you are so much more money ahead to just buy a done one. If you're look if you want a nice car, just go buy a done one. I know some of these cars are six figures, but there's a million six figure cars running up and down the road that are late models, so and they're pretty good investments. So a car like that, you could probably buy a done one for twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, you're gonna have twenty into a paint job. And you still gotta do interior wheels, tires, exhaust, so yeah, just buy a done car. So I guess I guess what I'm saying is thank you very much for watching. We're not gonna do a bunch of restorations or any restoration videos because it's 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 not my jam. And if I had a nice car then it'd be hard to put my dog in there. Uh, cause the Duff Dog couldn't sit on nice new seats that I had $5,000 into cause I would be sick to my stomach and uh, then you can't drive them in weather like this or any other weather and you gotta store them. Just, we're not nice car people. If you got a nice, I got nice cars and I, I like them but, and there again, both of them I pretty much bought done. I did the interior and some suspension work on the one. But Reggie, we bought done cause that's the way to go. So thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. Make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. We are on Instagram. We try to post on there once in a while. We got the Facebook page. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be at the Easy Dean Swap Meet in West Fargo at the uh, fairgrounds from nine to one on uh, February 24th. We're gonna go to the Lone Star Roundup, uh, April 19th and 20th. Hit us up there. This one's not for sale. It's not gonna be for sale. So price and availability, not in the video description. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, it doesn't matter you get it done. As long as you're having fun. You know what's fun? 6-2 diesels! We got some rear brake parts for that this week, so we'll have to put that in that thing. Finally got nice enough out for Mojo can drive that thing. I don't know. He said he parked it this winter for the brakes, but I think he parked it because 6-2 things and they don't start that great. Did you? Come here. Did you find a mouse? Hey, come here. Come here. Yep, that's a mouse. Good work. Good boy. Good boy. Go take and dispose of it. That would be great. No, don't bring it in the shop. I please hope it's D-E-A-D. -E oh, you got grease all over your back? From crawling under Mojo 6-2. Words is hard, Duff.
Well, uh, behind the scenes footage. I got a bunch of grills that I've collected or had or anyway, I got them here and they're in the way. And the grills all belong up top. So we're gonna take the old skizzer lift. We'll go for a ride and get some Mechanex wire. Duff's gonna supervise from the ground. So are you guys. And you're gonna watch me work, work, work real fast and uh, hang some grills up. I wanted to keep them and have like chronological order and stuff like that, but we're just, we're just winging it. Hopefully we don't drop any on that shiny engine up there on the lift. Cause that would be a bummer. We got it up on the wildfire higher so it, it doesn't drop all the way down onto the engine. It just drops, you know, a good eight, 10 feet onto the engine. Yeah, these things are taking up a bunch of space. I'll show you what we got first before we start hanging to refresh my memory. This is, I think it's a 32 Ford commercial. So pickup, it might be a 33, 34. Uh, there's a 32 Ford commercial or uh, car, 36 Ford commercial. So truck, I think this is like a 33, four diamond t that one picked up at iola uh, that one came from by smellendale i was on a pick this one was i think the first fire truck for sturham and or gwinter north dakota my dad ended up with that that was the best part of the whole deal this was on a hercules uh generator setup uh, that came from south dakota i've had that one for a long time dad got that about 10 12 years ago those are recent picks Oh man, we got a bunch of them. Uh, 34 to 36 International. I've had that one for a long time. That's still got the moving sticker from when I moved from Watertown. We got ourselves a uh, Ford tractor grill shell, like a 289N. I think this one came from Stupak a couple, I don't know, three, four years ago. He's a buddy of mine. I don't know where he found it, in the rock pile somewhere. And we did some bartering. There's a winter, Pines winter front. I don't know what that fits. I've had that since college. I think I picked that up at a swap meet or a pick somewhere. And there's a, I think it's a 31 Ford or 30 Ford commercial grill. I don't even know if that one will go up. Those things aren't really that cool. Anyway, I thought there was more of them. But they've been taking up space on our benches. Oh yeah, there's another 32, uh, Grill shell under there, that came from the swap meet where we got the Hillborn injected engine and the Model B engine and that little Model T roadster we gotta do something with, but we gotta get our benches back. So let's do it. And of course, the skizzer lift is dead. I think it needs batteries. So we got it hooked up. It's charging while we work.
There we go. I got the Ford tractor and the International over here. And then we got that Diamond T and the 232 Ford cars and the 32 truck and the Chevy and 356 Ford all over there. Got those things out of the way. And then I realized we forgot to hang the pines up there. And we also got a ancient, like a, I don't know, 28.9 International up there and a Jeep one. 74 Chevy, 64 to 66 Chevy pickup. There's a 44 dash I want to hang up and a Coca-Cola sign. There's a big standard oil sign there. We got all kinds of stuff to hang up. Just not enough time in the day. We got to clean the shop out so we can get access to all this stuff to hang it. So uh, there you have a little behind the scenes hanging action we got going on around here.